church as it is in heaven, God. Let heaven come. Father, we say, come. Come and manifest, Lord God, in our presence. Come and manifest your perfect will. Come and manifest your perfect way. Come and manifest, Father, everything that you have for each and every person in this place. Jesus, 
We say you are king of our lives, Lord, and you are king of our nation. So just where you are this morning, can I ask you, we're going to lift up a shout of a king, as the Bible says, because when we crown him king of kings, every other knee must bow, every other tongue must confess, everything else that tries to make itself kings in our lives, in this, in the, even in this nation, has to bow. So I'm going to count to three. Band, you ready? <laughs> okay. And we're going to shout the name of Jesus, crowning him king of this church, king of our homes, and king of this nation. Are you ready, church? Are you ready? One, two, three. I'm going to ask you to, to sit down quickly and I heard the Lord say something and then I'm going to hand over to Marlon but I heard the Lord say some of us are struggling financially so I'm going to read a scripture okay? and we're going to break that this morning because, yeah. because you see there's power in giving and I'm going to explain this a little bit we're not just talking about financial giving money. We're talking about giving, and Paul explains this beautifully in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. And let me read from verse 1. It says, And now, brothers and sisters, okay, we want you to know about the grace that God has given to the Macedonian churches. Out of the most severe trial, the overflowing joy, and the extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. I'm telling you, you, you may be feeling this morning, man, but I don't have much to give. And again, I'm not just talking money. I'm talking about even in your own life. We go through um, trials. We go through droughts. We feel, I don't have much to give. But the Lord shows um, through this church in Macedonia that they, even in their trial, even in their um, lack, were able to give richly out of generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own. They ur urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the saints. Did you hear that? They urg urgently pleaded for us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the saints. And they did not do as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then to us in keeping with God's will. Verse 6 says, So we urged Titus, since he had earlier made a beginning, to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But just as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness and in your own love for us see that you also excel in the grace of giving there's a grace of giving and it unlocks it unlocks even in the drought it unlocks the abundance of Jesus this morning we're going to take up the tithes and offering as part of our worship to unlock the grace of giving but I want to take this a little bit further than that Sometimes you got to urgently say and plea with the leadership, man, I need to give in service to the Lord. Even when you think you don't have much to give. And I was walking around, my little boy, I don't know, I had to sort him out next to his shine. But I was walking around and I just saw these riches sitting here. This wealth in you that the Lord has deposited. Yes. That needs to come to the fore. And you need to come out with a generosity of heart.
to say, I have, am able to bless someone, even someone sitting next to me. And so we do that through giving. And I'm asked, can we hand out the baskets? We do that through giving of offerings of tithes as we, as a church, steward these finances to advance the kingdom, but also look after our members who are in need. We have a storehouse called uh, Food Bank. Is that what we're calling it? Okay. Where people are able to bring um, groceries. And I want to thank you for those that have brought. There's a whole lot of stuff that's been brought in the last couple of weeks. We're taking those groceries and we are feeding those in need. I've realized in the last two weeks that God wants to see you blessed. eh? And it's not a prosperity gospel. This is the gospel of Jesus. God wants to see you blessed to abundance. And sometimes your blessing is lying with someone who is able to put their hand in their pocket and say, I'm willing to bless. And I'm saying to the Lord, I want to be one of those, Lord. Generosity of heart. A grace of generosity to give, to bless. And so, I, I'm, I stand here with a testimony as well that I've seen the goodness of God in the last few weeks. And maybe you hear this morning and you're saying, Lord, I am in dire strait. I want to encourage you. The Lord sees your need. He sees your need. And I want to prophesy this morning that the Lord will meet your need. And you got to have hope. you got to stay in expectation. And I, I um, you know, you, the, David says, why so downcast over my soul? I've learned you got to strengthen yourself in the Lord. And you got to look past the fuel uh, increases and the interest rates and all this other stuff. And I went to the shop yesterday and I saw that my favorite juice is now 50 rand. And I could yeah, <laughs> help me. It was 26 rand last week. Eh? <laughs> But you've got to look past all of that and you've got to say, my hope and my faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. My source is Him, not even this church. And then you've got to put yourself on the other side and say, I want to have a generous heart, Lord. That even when I have little, I see a need I'm willing to give. So I'm going to pray for the tithes and offerings. Charles, okay, I pray. <laughs> And then I'm going to hand over to Marlon. Father, every home is represented here today. Lord, you know their needs. You even know, Father, their pain. And Lord, I pray that as this money has been given as an offering of worship, that you would bless every home. God, you care about every single one of us, even those who could not give. And so I pray that you'd give this church leadership the wisdom to steward your finances well. Lord, I pray that you'd give us as a church the grace of generosity, the grace of giving, that we would bless others, Lord, those particularly that are in need. And so bless every household's finances, we pray. In Jesus' name. And the people of God say, Amen and Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team, and good morning. Welcome, everyone. Um, what a praise party. Yeah? Eh? Yes, like it. Okay. Hello. How are you? Fine. Um, we'll continue the whispering um, until you guys are okay. Um, I'm here to do the welcome and announcements. <laughs> you guys look very serious towards me, so I'm <laughs> just echoing <laughs> what I'm getting here. But um, if you are new at the Father's house, hello. Um, it's really good to have you here this morning. Um, as you see, we are people that just love worship, eh? Yeah, we just love worshiping the Lord, eh? Um, so I just want to say, Jason and the team, once again, thank you so much. Um, and to, I think... We don't say this often, but congregation, thank you for just pouring out. Eh? It's really awesome um, when we as a community pour out, things can happen, man. 
Um, so it's really awesome to see. So if you're visiting for the first time, that's what we do here. Um, we we love God. We love people here. Um, and you must probably walked in. You got hugs. Um, kisses, hopefully appropriately, <laughs> um, and you got more hugs, and you got a card, and if you got that card, um, will you do me a favor? I don't know if it's that small, but it's, I'm assuming it's bigger, but you got a card, <laughs> okay? Um, please fill it in. We'd love to connect with you. We would love to um, tell you more about who we are, um, what we do here, and just tell us more about our culture um, and our love for people, and if you feel like, yo, that's home, and then you soon must sign up, and you're like, this is it. I know. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. But welcome. So good having you all here this morning. We're really looking forward to it. We love celebrating birthdays, by the way. Like, this is a church where we celebrate birthdays, eh? And we party, and that's a lot of people. Um, so, phew, that list is going to go on for days. So if your name is there, and you are here, Auntie Margaret, where are you? I'm going to put you on the spot. Where are you, Auntie? There you are, Auntie Margaret. Hey! Happy birthday. To you, I just like it, man. Auntie Margaret is so awesome. Hey, um, if you don't know Auntie Margaret, she does so many things here. Um, oh, oh, together, yes, yes, with Fred. It's not about him. It's your birthday. Okay, you can couple later. <laughs> This is your moment. <laughs> but um, happy birthday to all of those um, who are celebrating birthdays. If you see them, hang out with them. We have coffee next door. Grab a cup of coffee, chill, um, find out what their plans are, and then you can like party with them. Derek, uh, let me know if you're having something at your house. <laughs> Um, I'll be there, bro. <laughs> um, but just so you know, our services every Sunday at 9 o'clock here at the Father's House. Um, the beautiful thing about... Um, our services is before we start, we have what is called corporate prayer, and that is really where we can come together, um, just lay the week before the Lord, um, and just lay ourselves before Him during that time. So from half past eight to about ten to nine, we have corporate prayer here. It's an amazing time, and if you've never experienced it before, I want to encourage you, man. Try it out once. Um, and I promise you, you must probably come back the next week, eh? Um, but try it out. Um, join us. It's really amazing. And for those of you who need that extra 20 minutes, we start 9 o'clock, <laughs> okay, um, every Sunday. And if you miss a service or if you'd like to just listen again, you've been impacted by the Word, please note we've got our YouTube channel that has all our sermons on. And also we've got, we cool, we've got a podcast channel. Praise God. Um, so you can find us on our podcasting channel so you can listen. And, um, and you can take it from there as well. We also have hospital ministry happening this um, month, um, Thursday the 18th and the 25th of April. Both of those are at 7 p.m. at Carl Bremer. Um, it's amazing ministry um, where you are able to pray um, for others. So this is the big one, um, and you just need to give me like a minute to explain how everything works because it's quite a bit. But this year, um, we will be having a conference here at the Father's House, and the conference will be called Inter generational conference, all right? This intergeneration, if you don't know who we are at the Father's House, we are intercultural and intergenerational, um, where we believe that we as a family and as a community worship together, engage together, and we like do life together, all right? Young and old, we do it together, learning from one another. So we are definitely going to show you more and explain more what this intergenerational thing looks like. It will be hosted here at the church between the 2nd and the 4th of May. So if you have your calendar out quickly there, just book those um, dates, the 2nd to the 4th of May. And I'm going to go through quickly some admin for you, but the Thursday evening and the Friday evening. All right, those will be um, what we calling um, open to all. Um, it's basically free entry to this. You only need to book your seat on Cricket for us. Um, our venue does have a capacity, so we'll be sending out the link. Social media will have the link. The church will have the link. Our WhatsApp channels will have the link. Our website will have the link and everything. You're more than welcome to go on there, book your ticket. It's open to all. That is the Thursday and the Friday, and then the Saturday morning, there's another session that's happening, and that session, Saturday morning, is for all of those who are, for example, I'm going to read this list, they've got a long list here, it's basically for the whole family, 
It is also for grandparents, aunties, uncles. God. Basically, it's for Amal, no? <laughs> so they make you come, all right? The only thing there, obviously, you would have to book um, your ticket as well. So again, if you go onto the website, um, onto the Quicket link, there's more details, more explanation. Also, the topics of what we'll be covering will also be there. And then also, obviously, the Saturday afternoon, we have another session. And that is for anyone who's working in children's ministry. And I actually want to encourage you, not just children's ministry. Um, I know I advocate for education quite a lot. But um, if you're a teacher, if you're um, working with youth, if you um, any role um, that you are with these young people involved, I would encourage you to please um, join that session on Saturday um, afternoon as well. So don't forget, it's the interconference, and we'll be, will be done by Shane Cook, an amazing guy who has years of experience, um, and he's been doing so much. You can check out his content. Um, there will be resources here as well. So it's going to be a weekend of notes. Okay, so please say that dates and make sure you are there. I have not missed anything about that conference, eh? Nothing. Okay, cool. And that is it. And then as Thomas mentioned, yeah, at the Father's House, we've got a food bank. Um, winter is coming, and we do know that people are in need, um, and there are even people in our congregation who might need certain things. So please, your non-perishables, if you could um, drop that at the office, they'll gladly take care of it, sort it all out, and do things like that. And then just to end off, we've got some regular meetings happening. There's quite a bit. Um, youth every Friday at 7 um, to 7.30. Yeah, woo-woo. Um, amazing ministry that's run by this amazing guy called Marlon Bird. Um, he's just amazing. Um, and if you don't know him, get to know him later. He's amazing. Oh, thank you, man. Bless you. Um, whoever that was, I'll give you a coffee later. <laughs> um, we also have ladies' meetings happening every Wednesday. Aunt Veronica, you here? There we are. Aunt Veronica, um, please speak to Aunt Veronica if you are a lady and you're free on a Wednesday and you just want to party with some more ladies, get over there. Um, healing streams, please note we believe in holistic caring and looking after oneself. Um, so healing streams is a brilliant ministry where you are able able to um, just seek the Lord, right? And you are able to let go of things of the past. And more importantly, you're able to walk in freedom. Um, that is the goal of our healing stream. So please feel free to make an appointment. It's not scary. It's also free. Like, it's free, man. Um, so make sure you do that. Um, quick, get connected, go out there. Moms connect. For those moms out there, oh, what a lovely space. Um, I hear it's just going well there. They have a lot of fun. They can talk about things and engage. So please, moms connect. It happens the last Saturday of every month from half past two to half past four. Um, again, all of these things are regular because as a community, we do believe that we walk in all stages and phases of life. Um, so our moms journey together, but they're also here at church. Um, our youth journey together, but they're also here with parents worshiping together as well. And that's what it's about here at the Father's House. Um, and then lastly, we've got some counseling and marriage counseling with Jose and Cheryl. There they are. Um, please speak to them, an amazing couple. Um, they've got plenty of wealth. Um, to give, as Tom has said, um, and wisdom just to um, impart over there. And then the classics, you guys, um, I don't, I'm going to feel bad if I say the age, but you know if you know. <laughs> okay, you know if you know. Um, classics, you the first Friday of every month, 9.30 at the church. That is all that I have for you this morning. Listen, I hope you guys are going to have an amazing service. Um, we're going to call up Didi quickly. Um, and Didi will... Ooh, you missing there, Didi? My bro? <laughs> yes. I thought you were going to have a rapid tackle each other here. <laughs> fragile. Um, yeah, let's just quickly pray, and then I'll hand over to Didi. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you for who you are. Um, we stand in awe of you. We are amazed at what you do, Lord. So, we just ask that you bless Didi right now as you share. Um, whatever you've planned, let it pierce our hearts, Lord, Father God. We pray that you'd open our hearts and our minds to just receive and use Didi. Give him the peace that he needs. Give him the boldness to speak, Lord. And just for the rest of the service and all that we do, may we just look to you, Lord. May we look to you. In your name, amen. Amen.
that would be nice. Marlon said quickly, that's why I made a dash for it, to show you my blistering speed. Yeah, but it's supposed to be. Well, good morning. It is, as usual, good to be with you. Um, two weeks ago, I was not here, and I kind of thought where I was, I miss those guys, you know? I knew there was something missing from me. You know, I don't say I miss people, I say they are missing from me. So know that you felt missing from me. I hope you felt the same about me. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. <laughs> oh, thank you. One person, I'll take it. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, like that to want more. But we had an awesome Easter weekend, if you were here. We started with Tenebrae, which is always one of the highlights of my, of my year. I love the Tenebrae service. It really is just an awesome and a very moment of reverence. But it also always brings me to tears to think that there's somebody 2,000 years ago that thought I was okay enough for him to die for me. It's, 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 it blows me away. And then we had Good Friday, and Gurley brought a word, uh, preach the gospel. Man, got to preach the gospel, man. It's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And on Sunday, we, we had some ashes. We burned some papers. We made beautiful ashes, beautiful ashes, as the word says, beautiful ashes. It was wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. And those sermons, like Marlon said, they're online in case you missed it. But, so last week I had this thought, and I thought, yeah, Easter, we've now, some of us, most of us, I hope, if you haven't, it's a good idea to do so. We've surrendered our lives to Jesus Christ, so what? No. What do we do next? What do we do now with this thing that we've, now be, we've said we're going to be committed followers of Jesus Christ? What does that mean? I want to be an apprentice of this Jesus that walked this earth who like it. What are we going to do? Are we just going to be saying now that we are called, we're just going to be? We're just going to sit and just be? It's nice to know that. Or what happens next? So when you give your life to Jesus, you have this full-blown miracle that's happened to you. You know, I love to see miracles, ears open, eyes see, legs grow out, all that kind of thing. But a full-blown miracle happens. And Paul describes it in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. He says, but God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead in our sins, because of our sins, we were dead. God gave us life when he raised Jesus from the dead. It's only by God's grace that you've been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Paul uses Christ three times. He says, we made alive with Christ, we are raised with Christ, and we've now been meant to sit with Christ. He's come to us to live in us, and he's joined us to himself. And we are one person with him. One of the foundations of our Christian faith and experience is that wonderful and tremendous statement that we are made alive with Christ. Jesus Christ, being very God or very God, and I didn't know that we were going to shout Jesus because he is the Messiah and the King. He's the Christ. He's the Son of God. He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. He's our Savior. He's my Lord. He's my rock. He's my Redeemer, my strength, and my shield. He's the bright morning star. He is the Rose of Sharon. He is the Lion of Judah. He is the Lamb of God. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He is the light of the world. He is the Good Shepherd. He is the Lamb that was slain for my sins. He is the light of the world. He's my healer. He's my restorer. He's my deliverer. He's my comforter, my greatest comfort, the lover of my soul, the only way, the only truth. He's the life, and he's the source of all my joy. That is the Jesus that dwells within us, that calls us children of God. So 1 John 3 verse 1, he says, See how very much the Father loves us. And he calls us his children. That is what we are. Before we anything else, we are children of God. So now that we know that Christ dwells within us, and our sins have been nailed to the cross, what happens next? 
Let me say this. There is life after your death on the cross. You just didn't die and stay in the tomb. With, you know, there is life after your death on the cross. So if you would turn with me to the book of Colossians, chapter 1. Paul, Paul writes this letter to the Colossians, and, he, and he's actually addressing a heresy that has sort of found its way into that church. And it was that Jesus was less than God. Because they, they, you know, because they denied his true humanity. And they, they said that there's a secret higher knowledge of Scripture that's needed. And Jesus is not salvation. That was the heresy that crept into this church. So in verse 27, he says, To them God has chosen to make them known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Paul spends, Paul spends a lot of time in that very first chapter and he talks about the superiority of Jesus. He showed that um, God created everything and now holds it in place. He talks about the redemption of humanity. And it even takes it further. Now, Paul being Paul says, God has commissioned me to, to, to present the word of God in fullness. And the fullness of that was Christ living within them. That was what he came to reveal. Because in the next chapter, in, in, verse, in uh, Colossians 2, verse 9 and 10, he says... For in Christ, all the fullness of deity lives in bodily form, and you've been given the fullness in Christ, who is the head of, over every power and authority. And Paul corrects this heresy by saying that everything you need for salvation is found in Christ. And that they've already been given the fullness in him, because in Christ, the mystery and the secret things of God are revealed. Everything we need for our salvation is found in Christ. Through the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, the mysteries and the secret things of God is revealed. Christ in you, Christ within us. It's, it's such a profound and it's a timeless statement that resonates with Christians across generations. It encapsulates the very essence of what it means to be Christ-like. And it calls us to live authentically. It calls us to live a life of loving unconditionally. In one sense, that, that, that little statement, it's a whisper. It's gentle. It's actually quite simplistic. But it's a whisper of grace. It's a whisper that the presence of God dwells within us, guides our steps in every way, every turn that we go, even when the road is obscure, even when the road is uncertain. uncertain. It's a kind, gentle whisper of the Father that draws us to Him. It's, it's that gentle voice that you hear the Father saying to you, and, you know, the Holy Spirit sings over you. I can't remember any time in my life where the Father has ever been harsh towards me. It doesn't matter what I did. My earthly father might have scowled me from time to time. Hey, don't do that. Don't tease your sisters. But the Father has never been harsh towards me. Even in his rebuke, I could feel his love. Even when he said, that's not a good idea. It's not, that's not a good idea. I'm going to hit you with lightning and thunder. That's not a good idea because it's not good for you. And I love you enough to tell you that'll hurt you. You know, that's that prodigal son vibes. And Jesus says, if you see me, you see the Father. And Jesus tells that story to give us a depiction of what the Father is really like. Because, you know, sometimes we think the Father sits far up in heaven, you know, he's watching us from a distance waiting for you to go wrong, and then he's going to smack you. No. That's not the father I know. Some of us might have had that experience from our earthly fathers, and we see God through those lenses, but that's not the heavenly father we know. And there's so much grace. There's so much grace, and there's so much kindness in the Lord that leads us to repentance. I don't ever want to lose that grace. I don't ever want to lose that feeling of being loved by a kind and generous Father. It's a grace that gets down with you into the dirt, but it doesn't allow you to stay there because He raises you up again from that dirt, from a life of despair into a life with Christ. Christ within us, Christ within you. It's another sense. It's, it's, a, it's a roar of transformational power, <coughs> urging us, drawing us to shed the old self, to live fully for Christ. It's the two, both. We, we can't encounter, encounter Jesus and just be the same person. 
If you fully encounter Jesus, your life can never be the same. Like that lady said, I know I was one way, now I'm another. Because of my encounter with Jesus. When God shows up, everything changes. God showed up and he spoke. Heaven and earth was created. When God showed up, the seas were parted. The sun stood still because God showed up. He raised Jesus from the dead, who is now seated on the right hand of the Father. We were destined for destruction, but God showed up. A few years ago, they said we're going to be without water in the Western Cape. But God showed up. 1994, South Africa is destined for civil war. It's going to be violence and bloodshed. And there was a little here and there. But God showed up. And God will show up in this country again in a mighty and awesome way, like we've never seen before. I am this, I'm convinced. When I thought my life was over, when I said, God, I don't think you exist. I said, God, I don't want to live anymore. Come and get me now. God showed up. And he said, no, not now. Some stuff for you to do. God showed up. When he shows up, we're healed. We're restored. We're renewed. When God shows up, darkness has to flee. And the gates of hell is the words that cannot prevail. That's that indwelling presence of Jesus Christ. It's knowing that God is our Father. And we trust Him enough to know that He cares for us. That He loves you. When we say yes to Jesus, when we say yes to that indwelling presence of Jesus Christ, we become vessels for His grace. We become agents of reconciliation and unity. It compels us to love the way Jesus loved, to see people the way that Jesus saw them. And we can't help but extend that kindness to strangers, to, you know, fellow Christians, boss, spouse, that brother you don't want to speak to, that sister that did you wrong. It compels you to seek reconciliation. That's the indwelling Jesus. It's the Jesus that say, Didi must decrease and God must increase. Say that again, Didi must decrease. It's going to take a while to lose weight. but Now, it says God must increase. Christ within us takes away our search for significance. Takes away our search for position. Because God promotes. I don't have to go after those things. God puts, it, Christ within us puts to death my need to perform. And it replaces performance with servitude. Because that's what Jesus did didn't perform, he performed miracles, but it wasn't for show. It was being glory to God. Follow the life of Jesus. It was always, it's not me, glory to my Father. Always going back to the Father. We become that text, and I mean, Tim quoted it last week in Isaiah 61. Christ within us moves us to become that text of said, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. Sent me to bind up the broken heart, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. That's what Christ within us does. And every now and again, I take stock of my own life. And I ask, listen, if Christ is within me, am I constantly being transformed? Are my thoughts aligning to the mind of Christ? Am I still thinking the thoughts that Christ would think about other people, about situations? Am I still doing what God has called me to do? I made little little noughts and crosses next to it. Like, yeah, I think I'm still okay. And no, I don't know. I don't know if I'm still doing that. But this is Christ within us, the hope of glory. That glory is not pat on the back, and it's not recognition. The hope of glory, Paul talks about, is our future union with Jesus Christ. As Paul writes in Romans 8, verse 17, we are joined heirs with Christ, destined for glory. One day, I will be made perfect. Huh? Nobody believes that, but I do. Because I will share in His divine nature. That's one day. I will share in the eternal glory of Christ. That's what the Word says. But in the meantime, we're in transit. From this life to the next. And then Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16 to 18. 
There's some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful pearls that Paul writes here. And he says that we're not to lose heart. Just where we are in terms of our current situation, the economy and all the stuff that's going on, crime and politics and elections coming up. For some, it's none of that. For some, it's family issues. For some, it's tensions and turmoil at work. And it's, you know, you're struggling and all these things are tugging at you. And sometimes you feel, Lord, where are you? I've said that before, and I'll put my hand up. It's like, God, where are you in all of this? Everything seems to be going wrong. It doesn't look like there's a future. It doesn't look like things will be sorted. God, where are you? So let's see what Paul says in that 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16 to 18. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient. And the things that are unseen are eternal. And so Paul, in verse 16, he claims there's, there's a secret here, there's a key of experiencing some, something that virtually everybody in the world wants, is that experience of not losing heart. An experience of having hope. And he says that only comes by being renewed day by day. So he makes this bold claim that if we want to combat hopelessness, you want to combat despair, we are to be renewed every day, day by day. None of us came here today to feel discouraged and disheartened. None of us came here to hear that our life is futile. We're wasting away. We might as well just give up and die. If we were offered daily renewal, we'll grab it. We'll take it. If we get offered hope every single day and joy every single day, abundant joy every single day, we won't refuse that. I'll grab it. And that's what the world needs. And that's what the followers of Christ, that's what we have in Jesus Christ. That is the key. A couple of weeks ago, I was preaching somewhere. I don't know, can't even remember where it came from, but I just went like, we simply cannot keep this Jesus to ourselves anymore. And in this world, it's very easy to lose, lose hope. And the world will offer us thrills and, you know, those temporary highs. But none can outlast the hope that's found in Jesus Christ. Because the hope draws us to eternal things, not temporary things. You have a quick sip or a quick sniff or a quick smoke, temporary high. As Paul, Paul starts that verse 16, he says, Therefore, he says, in another translation, he says, So, so we do not lose heart, therefore we do not lose heart. But he's talking about the preceding verses. He's giving this whole list of things. So if you look at verse 7 of that 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7 it says, We have the treasure of Christ and his gospel in weak bodies so that all the glory goes to God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Verse 8 and 9, We are afflicted but not crushed, perplexed but not despairing, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Verse 10, when we carry about in our body the dying of Jesus, the life of Jesus is manifested in our bodies. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Verse 14, God will raise us from the dead with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Verse 15, through our suffering grace extends to more and more people and increases thanksgiving to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. And Paul is experiencing in that, while he, I'm sure while he's writing, he's experiencing that heart-renewing power by filling his mind with those truths. And the way we create it, we get the sensory influx of things going to our mind and it moves to our hearts. There's a transition that takes place. It's a, our condition of the heart is influenced by the things we think about. That's how we, that's how we set up. We, we, well, often we're influenced by what we focus on in terms of what we see and what we get. So daily we can say, I know my Redeemer lives. Therefore, I will not lose hope. I will not lose heart. And in the end, He, 
will stand on the earth. Therefore, I will not lose heart. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Therefore, I will not lose heart. And there's scripture and scripture and scripture that you can go. I will not lose heart. The Lord is my shepherd. Therefore, I will not lose heart. The unseen things are eternal. All those hardships and afflictions, are they meaningless? No. Because the Lord is always at work, even if we don't see it. There's always something happening. God's always doing something, even when we're going through suffering and we're going through pain. We're not immune to these things because we live in a fallen world. Things will happen. You know, if you look at the life of Paul and the amount of suffering he endured, there's this wonderful text. You don't have to go there, but 2 Corinthians um, 11, verse 24 to 28, and Paul tells them all the things that he's going through, and I'll read it from the message. I've been flogged five times with the Jews' 39 lashes, beaten by Roman rods three times, pummeled with rocks once. I've been shipwrecked three times and immersed in the open sea for a day and night, in hard traveling year in and year out. I've had to ford rivers, fend off robbers, struggle with friends, struggle with foes. I've been at risk at the city. I've been at risk in the country, endangered by the desert sun and sea storm, betrayed by those I thought were my brothers. I've known drudgery and hard labor, many a long and lonely night without sea, and my heart goes out to Paul for this one. Many a missed meal, blasted by the cold, naked to the weather. And that's not the half of it. When you throw in the daily pressures and anxieties of all the churches, those especially for the pastors. But the promise is this. Even though our afflictions last for a lifetime like it did for Paul. Paul, being the apostle of Christ, was persecuted. He was executed. But yet he said, these things are light and temporary in the, when we consider future glory with Christ Jesus. That's why Jeremiah, in, in, in Lamentations, he can write, because if you read that chapter 3, you'll see all the things, you know, his mouth was crushed, all these things went wrong with him. And he says, the mercies of the Lord are new every morning, they're new every day. I don't want yesterday's mercies for today. I want fresh new mercies, like using fresh ingredients in a beautiful pasta. Mm. Praise the year. I want old ingredients, I want fresh ingredients to make the most beautiful dishes. I want it to be new, new every day. And there will be moments where we know that the Lord will protect us from conflict sometimes, but other times it will happen. But we don't forget that we are weak, but He is strong. We are weak, but He is strong. Yeah, I like that song, I remember. All of a sudden I'm back in children's church. 1 Peter 4.11, Peter says, he says, Serve by the strength that God supplies in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. He gives us strength. When we are weak, we need His renewal. Day by day so that we don't lose heart. God is working. God is working within us. God is working within you and me. For His glory. The promise of eternity with Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. God the Father where we with all the hosts of heaven will be crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. We sang it. Just meant that, that imagery and Revelation 4 comes to mind, you know, the, the rubies and the emeralds and the sea of glass and the flying creatures and the blaze of lightning and the, the thunder. That's the age that is to come where everything that was wrong will be set right where there will be no more tears, no more suffering, no more death. That's our eternal reality. It's not a fantasy. It's not just the chronicles of Narnia and all those weird, wonderful things. That's our future reality in Christ Jesus. Christ within us, the hope of glory. There's hope for me, I, I feel somebody saying. You know? But this transformation takes time. It's a journey that we're on. Sometimes it's in an instant. I've seen people change just like this. In a prayer, in a moment. Marlon, I'm going to need lessons on this thing, man. <laughs> the disciples were with Jesus for three years. And they didn't get it right all the time. In fact, he, Jesus even, I think he kind of lashed out at them and says, I mean, how you guys are with me every day. Shame on the guys that are coming after you. How are they going to believe if you guys are struggling? 
But here's my encouragement for us today, that we need and we want that fresh, new, daily infilling of the Holy Spirit through prayer and the Word of God, through fellowship with one another, through community with one another. We can encourage one another. We pray for one another. We need each other. And then the challenge is that we don't keep that Christ within us for ourselves. And that we leak Christ wherever we go. That we leak that hope of glory. The promise of eternity with Christ Jesus. We were in... So we had a staff meeting a couple of weeks ago. And those things make me very hungry. They do. And so... I claimed to have had this word from the Lord that my dear brother Marlon and my dear brother Jason and Tim and my brother Bertram and my sister Chauvet, they were hungry. So I felt this anointing that we should go get some sandwiches. Yeah, it was, it was profound. You know, the Lord... <laughs> now, I was hungry, so I forced them all to go with me. So, <laughs> so we, got to, to, we got to where we were, Marlon, Fairbridge Mall. And so, um, as we walked into the mall, I just had the sense the Lord is up to something. So I went direct, immediately to go order pancakes, because the Lord is up to something. <laughs> With cinnamon and sugar. And, mm. oh. and then I went over to the, co- to the coffee shop where they were waiting for coffee and, and uh, sandwiches. And then the next moment I saw a waitress walking. And I asked her. Are you, do, you, do you suffer from tension headaches? She said, how do you know? I said, well, I think the Lord wants to heal you. So can I pray for you? And I gave her my name and I said, I'm a follower of Christ. And I believe Jesus wants to heal you because he wants to show you that he loves you. And she says, okay. So I pray. Lord, this is my friend, Wendy. Thank you for her. Father, would you heal? Take away these tension headaches. So I said to Wendy, be honest with me. If you're not feeling anything, it's okay. But just tell me, if you're feeling something, say it. If you're not feeling anything, say it as well. And she says, that actually feels a bit better. I said, so, Wendy, do you think we can pray again? I just want the Lord just to complete whatever he started in you. And she says, okay. So I prayed. I said, Lord, just finish. Just complete the work you've started and and just bless her family. And, you know. And then she opens. I said, and Wendy, what happened? Anything? She says, it's gone. The tension is gone. The headache is gone. And then she walked off. I didn't share the gospel with her. She took, that's why she took so long with the sandwich. Just sorry, Marlon. <laughs> All I did was leave her with the love of Jesus, the healing power of Jesus. Because I told her who's healed her. I gave her a little glimpse of the age that is to come. In fact, the Lord, through Christ within me, gave her hope. And we carry that hope. We carry the love of God. We carry the very presence of God. It's in our DNA. It's who we are. And it's an enormous, but it's an awesome privilege to share the gospel, to share Jesus with people. And we represent, people, we represent Jesus wherever we go. Wherever we go, we carry that influence of Jesus Christ. And we show each other, we show the world that Christ within us, He is our hope, our hope of glory. Amen. So, where is Mr. Jason? He's disappeared, it's okay. Let's just close our eyes for a moment and just, let's just wait on the Lord.
I had this sense well, p- preparing for this and this morning that I, I need to tell somebody that you're not a mistake. You're not a mistake. God knows you by name. Your life has meaning. You're not a chlipsy. You know, sometimes they say, oh, you weren't planned, you know. We didn't plan to have you. But the Lord planned for you to be here. The Lord planned for you to be in this life. And we want to break that feeling of feeling worthless. We to break that off you. Because you were not a mistake. For some of us, we, we live in despair because we, we're looking to the future and it's like, I'm, I've got this fear of the future because I don't know what the future holds. So, so if that's you, just put your hand out either in front of you or put your hand up. We want to pray with you. It's, it's been a while since we felt that Christ is within us. And today I believe the invitation is there for you to say, Christ within me, that's what I want. Fill me again, Lord. Fill me again. And if that's you, just put your hands out in front of you, just in a, in a, in a mode of receiving. So, Father, we thank you that our significance is found in you, that we're not worthless, that you call us by name and you now call us your children, that we belong to you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that we don't have to fear the future because you are with us. Even till the end of this age was your promise. So, Lord, come fill us again. Come fill us again, Lord. Fill us again. Come, Holy Spirit. For somebody that you've just got this sort of this lump in your throat and you just don't know what to do with it, let it out. The Lord's got those tears and He catches every one of them. roads behind you and they're all tangled but the Lord is rolling up those roads as if they never were and I see this road ahead of you with a handful of seeds and you're sowing them and the shoots are coming out those little green shoots because all this stuff is gone
Hebrew says, the sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word, is a verse that says, kiss the sun. This morning, the sun has a word for you to sustain you, and I believe there are times when the prophetic needs to go out and people need to prophesy, but there are times when the Spirit of the Lord wants to speak to you directly. And He wants you just to open up your ears and say, Lord, I'm here to hear the word you have for me to sustain me. So, okay, if you ask me to sing a song again, kiss the sun. Jesus is right here. Let's reach out to Him. The intimacy of that kiss, I believe, is where the Lord will speak directly to your heart. We say, come Lord Jesus. We say, Spirit, come in this place. 
Thank you for your sustaining word, Lord. You know, um, I wasn't going to share this, but let me share it. The verse that came during the prayer this morning um, was, in Peter, you are a chosen people, a holy nation. You've been set apart by God for His glory, for His purposes. I think it lines up with what you're saying. You're not a mistake. You've been chosen and you've been set apart. And so come Holy Spirit, fill us up so that we can be your chosen people to bring hope to a nation that desperately needs help. I'm going to ask you to take the person's hand next to you as we close the service. We'll just look at you guys. (laughs) Okay. And I feel we need to pray for our nation. Selection's coming up. Pray for our our government. Pray for the parties. The Bible says that we should pray for our leaders. We should bless them. And so, Father, we stand before you as a chosen people, as a holy people. Father, set apart for your purposes to bring the kingdom of God even here into South Africa. We declare, Father that you reign over this um, elections this year. Father, we nullify every enemy strategy over this nation, Father. Lord, let your perfect will be done in this nation of South Africa. I know, Father, that you love the people of South Africa. I am reminded, Holy Spirit, of the word that says that there will be a fire that will start even from the southernmost tip of South Africa that will spread into Africa into the nations of the world we ask Lord for revival to break out in South Africa Lord and we say Father start with us start within our own hearts Lord that we may carry the fire of revival wherever we go whether it's in the restaurant whether it's in our workplaces Lord Lord, we pray for the blessing of our leaders. We pray, Father, that you would remove those that don't belong there. That, Lord, you would place in there, in, within the government, within parliament, those that you have called, those that you have anointed, and those who you have appointed. And so we lift up, Father, every single one of those leaders. In Jesus' name. Bless our week, Father, as we gather again in growth groups, small groups, women's ministry, youth, wherever we connect, Father, until we meet again in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Why don't you have uh, grab a cup of coffee next door? It's on us. Okay. You can have a cup of coffee and look forward to seeing you.